Pisa Kanin Gopalakrishnan. He was working as a senior architect at Engineering Design Research Center, LNT Construction, India's largest construction company. He's also worked on projects ranging from institutional buildings to international airports, apartment complexes to aircraft hangars. He's also attended three international conferences and two national conferences and has also presented technical papers at the Jawaharlal Nehru University, Delhi and the MSRIT, Bangalore. He's also won the national championship at Archimen at the India's largest architecture quiz. Sir Kannan Gopalakrishnan currently runs a design firm, Habitat Design Studio, and he is also a visiting faculty at the renowned architecture schools in Tamil Nadu. Welcome to UGC lecture series, and this is part five of the lecture series in structures and architecture. In this part five, we will be covering one part of unit two. Unit two, like we mentioned earlier, deals with history of structural design in the post-industrial era. We have seen four lectures so far. Three units covered unit one, different elements in unit one. And the previous unit in unit two, we saw model construction and its history. We saw advantages and disadvantages of modular construction. We saw different types of modular construction, the two types. We saw different types of modules which can be constructed from a simple wall shape to a complex room shaped or a much bigger module too. We saw the general design considerations which we need to take care while using modular construction. We saw some disadvantages of modular construction too. And in this episode, we will be moving forward to look at long span structures. Long span structures cannot be entirely covered in this one episode. In this episode, we will try to look at the major types of long span structures and different ways in which the long span can be achieved. We will dwell in detail in long span structure in one more video in lecture number 6 too. So consider this as one part one of the two parts in long span structures. We will do a basic introduction of long span structures in this video and in the next video that is lecture number 6 we will be looking at details of long span structures. Take a look at these pictures on the screen. These four images that you see on the screen are very very simple rudimentary structures that we've all seen and experienced. We even saw structures like these in the earlier videos that we saw. Look at the first image. See a small shack with rundown walls, makeshift doors and a small roof on top of that in an abandoned setting. In the next two images, we look at wooden structures, small wooden cabins, which are made up of wood that are available locally with roofs, makeshift arrangements. And on the fourth image, we're looking at another similar kind of structure. If you try and analyze these earlier structures which we have been designing, the requirement of ancient structures were small. We used structures predominantly for domestic use, living, eating, praying, a very small amount of activities which did not require a large space. Later when we moved on higher up the rungs in the ladder of civilization, we required places where people need to gather and discuss ideas to govern their civilization. So we needed a congregation space. That space needed to be bigger because there needs to be more people that needs to gather there. Then we needed larger religious spaces because we don't want just a few people in our religious buildings anymore. We wanted large number of people so that we can show to the world that what religion that we follow, whatever religion that we follow is a mighty religion and there are a lot of followers. Our belief system 
took us from one level of religious following observance to another relig level of religious observance. We wanted bigger churches, bigger temples, bigger places of worship. Then our civilizations moved on. Take a look at these pictures. This picture is the view of an indoor stadium. Take a look at this picture too. This is a place where an aircraft is coming to park after a flight. This is where the maintenance, repair and overhaul of the aircraft is done. They are called hangars. Take a look at these spaces. These are large entrance lobby spaces of great large public buildings. The one below is the lobby building of an airport terminal where you need to have a large number of people there. If you look at these pictures, if you compare the previous four pictures that I showed you to these pictures, you will realize that our needs have changed as civilization changed. We wanted larger spaces so that we can accommodate larger people in congregational areas. Our transit hubs kept growing. We needed larger railway stations so that great many trains can come and great many people can be transported through trains. Our airport terminals became more bigger. Our cultural needs also grew along with our transport needs. We needed large auditoriums for our cultural pleasures. We needed stadiums to watch and to spectate great games. We needed auditoriums where people can be large amount of large number of people can be addressed by one single person or a group of people, theatres, malls, shopping areas, markets became bigger markets, bigger markets became supermarkets, supermarkets became hypermarkets and now we have huge malls. Our civilization has grown and our needs have grown too. We also needed spaces where we can store large amount of thing, a warehouse, a storage unit, cold storage. So these are the structures which require interestingly enormously large space and volume. And some of these spaces needs to be column free. By column free, I mean that the space should not have any pillars or columns inside. Imagine you are in an auditorium watching your favorite movie. Unluckily, you got into a seat right behind this huge column. How bad would that be? You will not be able to enjoy the movie. That space in an auditorium, that space in a movie theater, that space in a vast space needs to be column free. That is when we got the need of large span structures. These large span structures span increasingly, thus the name suggests, increasingly longer spans. They are wider, they are bigger, sometimes they are taller as they are required to be. Let us look at what large span structures are. Human need increased and demanded spaces that fitted the requirement. Requirements grew from simple domestic needs to mass storage spaces, supermarkets, hypermarkets, malls, auditoriums, theaters, airport terminals, aircraft hangars, etc. But how large are these large span structures? The moment you say large, the word large is a very, very relative word. How large is a large span structure? A structure with a span larger than 20 meters can be regarded as a long span structure because this is the kind of structure that is usually very difficult to be to achieve through conventional RCC structure. Conventional RCC structure is the ones with beams and columns. We have discussed about this in detail in the previous episodes. There is a famous thumb rule which most engineers would recommend without designing the depth of the beam if you want to find out the depth of the beam that is required in a particular area. There is a thumb rule 
which says the depth of the beam should be approximately L by 10 or L by 12, where L is the effective length of the span between the two columns that the beam is supporting. L is the distance, where the depth of the beam is approximately L by 10 or L divided by 12. We see structure with a span larger than 20 meters is regarded as a long span structure because imagine an RC RCC structure of 20 meters wide will have a beam depth of assuming L by 10, 2 meters. 2 meters will be the depth of the beam that spans 20 meters. Approximately, it could be less, it could be a little more. We are just looking at thumb rule calculations here. If the beam size is 2 meters and the volume, the ceiling height needs to be more bigger because we need to accommodate a 2 meter deep beam. If the room has mechanical ventilation, if the room has different requirement for lightings, if the room requires sprinklers, if the room has to carry pipes, conduits and other service related elements, if you need CCTV cameras, if you need other service related components which are to be fitted on the roof, all of these must be accommodated on the roof within the false ceiling and none of these can be can actually pass through a beam in normal circumstances. If there is a conduit that needs to pass through a beam, the structural engineer has to design the beam with a hole, which is increasingly difficult. If we are not doing any kind of special consideration, we need to take the conduits, the air ducts, the other pipes, cable trays, everything beneath the beam. That will occupy some amount of space. Your false ceiling component itself will occupy some amount of space. So together, if you're designing a 20 meter wide shopping mall area, your services thickness would come to close to about two meet, one meter. And your beam depth, if you assume 20 meters, your beam depth is approximately 1.6 to 1.8 meters. The total unusable space is close to three meters from the finished floor level of the previous floor above to the bottom of the false ceiling. The space which is non-habitable, which is not technically being used for habitation is close to three meters. We cannot afford to spend three meters of height every floor for a non-habitable space. That is why we needed long span structures to reduce the depth of the beam to make sure that your unusable space is at a minimum level. Types of large span structures, we have rigid element structures, suspension structures, stage structures and pneumatic structures. I will explain the different types of structures. I will tell you what these structures are about, we will look at a few images as to how these structures are built, how these structures look like. We will do examples and we will give you more details of these structures in the next video like I promised. Let us go to the first of these types, the rigid element systems. A rigid element structure like the term describes has elements that are solid that can span large distances. There could be many types of rigid element structures like planar structures where walls or thin components of planes, rigid thin planes are used to support the long spans. Second system is called the arched system where we use the system of an arch to support a large span. In our earlier video, we saw that arches can take immensely large amounts of loads when properly designed. We also saw that in an arch system, the compressive strengths are the only thing that matter. The tensile stresses 
are negligible in an arch systems. This arch system when properly designed can take large loads, can span bigger distances. Cathedrals of Europe, Gothic cathedrals, Renaissance cathedrals, they were all built of arches and piers. How were they able to span great distances? We saw them all in archivate construction. The next type of system is called the portal frames, where this is a kind of system which is long and when it is used for warehousing kind of functions, where there are different kinds of frames, different at equal regular intervals, they are called portals, they are three sided things and there is a roof that covers the entire structure on top of it. And then we have space systems which have a lot of frames. It is mostly in three dimensional, multiple frames, framework which interlace amongst each other to form the space frames, space systems. Then we have the triadic systems. Triadic systems are these kind of systems where element or one of the elements, one or more of the elements is flattened and it is bolted and it is connected with other elements so that the whole joint is stable and rigid. We have the regular vault and domical roofs. We saw in detail about vaults and domes in the previous episodes. Vaults are nothing but an arch when it is extruded becomes a vault. We saw different types of vaults, barrel vault, groin vault, quadpartite vault, sexpartite vaults, fan vaults. We saw different kinds of vaulting earlier. Domical roofs are nothing but a arch which is rotated by 360 degrees. We saw classic examples of domical roofs. Domes have been used in history to span enormously large distances. And the concept of domes is now being used by modern engineers and architects to span even larger spans. I will go to examples and I will start explaining how the system actually works in the upcoming video. In this video, we will just be looking at the different types and we will be learning the different elements that are existing in the different types of large span structures. These were all the types of rigid element systems. Moving on to the next system, which is a suspension structure system. Suspension system is again divided into two types, cables and membranes. A cable suspension structure could be a planar, double layered or a space cable, depending upon how the joints are made, depending upon the number of cables, depending upon how the cables are connected with each other. And in membrane suspension structures, it is about how the member is arranged or how the member is rolled upon to get the structure in a single stable position. It could be cylindrical or it could be in an ellipsoid shape. If you look at the pictures, you can see pictures of different cables and how they are connected. And this is a fork socket. This is a thimble where the cable is rolled and it is tied up here. This is a U clamp. These are other types of clamps which can be used in other membrane types of structures here. The next type of structures is the stayed structures. Stayed structures are again divided into two types. They could be rigid or suspension structures. The picture on the left hand side is of a hangar building. The picture on the right is the Olympic Stadium in Munich, Germany. We saw the differences between straight structures and suspension structures in the earlier video in bridges. If you right now at this point of time, if you have doubts between straight structures and suspension structures, you might have to go back to the previous video, video 3 and where we dealt with different kinds of bridges and we saw the different types of bridges and the differences between a staid suspension bridge, staid bridge and a suspension bridge. This works in pretty much the same way. 
it's the same name the same idea the same concept which is being used for a large span structure instead of a bridge a linear spanning structure the difference between a linear span structures and a regular large span structure is a bridge only requires people to move from one point to another point usually over a river or over something which cannot be crossed with ease bridges are usually thin whereas large span structures have the same length to achieve but they are also wide enough so that the large amount of people large number of people can be gathered in that particular area an olympic stadium is a very great example of that particular thing because there is again a large number of people gathered to spectate a particular event moving on to the next type we have parallel cable structures where if you see the two images these are the cables that support the roof in this diagram you can see that the cables pull in so that the structure can be maintained at this level it's the same thing that happens here too the cables are pulled in so that the structure is maintained at this level these are called parallel cable structures this is another type of large span structure where the cable structures are formed by an arch it starts out with simple arches like the ones here plan and section plan and section again and you can move on to producing complex forms by arranging simple arched structures from complex forms to more complex forms more larger and bigger areas it can be used to span very large amount of areas if you look at the classification we have classified the large span structures based on function when the size varies when the width varies height varies volume varies because based on function every space needs to have a different space dimension different volume different heights and different dimensions based on the different heights based on the different dimensions based on the volume the type of construction that is required also changes for a normal 3 meter by 3 meter room an rcc room roof would be ideal the roof could be made of any material even wood stone even brick bricks when arranged in a herringbone pattern on wooden logs placed at regular intervals can also become a roof for smaller structures where height is also small and the spans are also smaller we can use large number of materials we have a variety of materials that can be used to span smaller structures but when the size increases when the height increases when the volume increases tremendously we require more complex methods to solve it that is why we have different complex structures if you take a look at this span again a different kind of a cable structure that is formed by an arch here in both the pictures you have a similar arch arrangement and on the picture on the top you have panels that are being used as roof covers that are mounted on top of the arches thereby forming a big space this kind of a space this kind of a volume is very ideal for aircraft hangars if you look at the picture below it's a framework is the same between this and this except that the height of this arch is a little greater than this height the systems are the same but the roof element instead of putting panels directly on top of the arches they are suspended from the ceiling from the arches so that is how the ceiling has been formed this type of structures could be used for warehouses it could be used as for auditorium purposes 
the advantage of the bottom image structure over the top image structure is that if the structure needs to be a conditioned the volume of a conditioning required in the picture below is much less than the volume of a condition that is required on this image that is another reason why the height of this arch is more than the height of this type of arch using the same skeleton using the same construction methodology we can now see how two different types of buildings two different typologies of buildings can coexist under the same type of structure moving on to the next type this type is called a tented structures we saw tented and mastered structures on our earlier videos thus tented and mastered structures when they are used in number of ways could form to span very large distances this is an example of pneumatic structure another type of long span structures trusses are also used to span large spans folded plates are an excellent example of how large span structures can be formed if you look at paper if you want to span distances if you want to support loads with paper it's very difficult paper are bendy but the same paper can be used in a different way if the paper is folded in a proper fashion this can be used to span and this can be used to take enormously large loads imagine two thin slices of paper holding up a book like this well that is the magic of structural engineering then we have shell structures which are again used to span large areas we have come from spanning large areas by arches and early cathedrals to spanning larger areas by forms such as this to great span structures interesting steel structures in this video we have understood how long span structures are created we saw how they work we saw what is required of it we saw what how long is a long span structure how large is a large span structure we saw the advantages of large span structures we saw the different types of large span structures there is another part to this video where we will be looking at in detail at different types of these large span structures and how they work with examples that will be the part 2 of this video with basic understanding you should be able to answer these questions or even if you're not able to answer these questions you should definitely be able to answer these questions at the end of the next lecture anyways i'm just going to shoot the questions in front of you try to answer these questions try and trace the evolution of long span structures what are the broad classifications of long span buildings explain with examples explain the necessity of long span structures what are the types of buildings for which you would suggest long span structures and why what are the different materials and technologies which can be used in long span construction keep thinking about these questions even if you're not able to answer these questions it's okay we only covered one part of the two part about large span structures in next video you should be able to answer all these questions definitely